Whenever I get a flash of inspiration, inspiration to meet some sort of goal, to achieve some sort of objective, I always go full blast on it. The day I woke up and decided to quit smoking cigarettes, I made an oath to myself. An oath to quit smoking cold fucking turkey, no exceptions. And shame on me if I succumb to using Nicorette gum or nicotine patches to wean myself off of them. Cold fucking turkey and day one starts right fucking now. Fast forward to the end of the week. I'm at a bar having some beers with a friend of mine who's also decided to quit smoking, and my friend is kind of irritated right now because quitting smoking fucking sucks. We're watching a soccer match and his team's losing, and he's getting way angrier about it than usual, but he just takes out another piece of Nicorette gum to chew on, he puts on a new nicotine patch, and with this he can still find the strength within himself to not want to stab the nearest person with an ice pick. But me, I'm dying because I took my fucking oath and I'm quitting cold turkey. I'm trying anything I can. I'm chewing on folded over cocktail straws and pretending it's a cigarette. A waitress drops her tray of drinks nearby and I get a pulsing headache. I order another beer and as soon as I take my first sip, I have to push it aside because just a taste of beer is making me want to run off and buy a fresh pack. My friend looks at me going through all this and he can't help but ask me, why do you put yourself through this shit? I can give you a piece of Nicorette gum, it helps taper yourself off. And what I respond to my dear friend's very reasonable concern is simply, because this is just how I do things. I somehow manage to not smoke a single cigarette for the entire night and I go to bed feeling proud of myself for not backing down on my oath. Fast forward three months later and after being completely cigarette free for all this time, I now find myself in Japan and everyone here smokes and smoking is allowed everywhere and I'm being offered all these awesome Japanese cigarettes that I'm never gonna get a chance to try again, like Seven Stars Black Charcoal Menthol and Pianissimo, which is peach flavored. And now I'm smoking again because the pressure's become overwhelming and it's broken me of all my willpower I'd worked so so hard to maintain. The same thing goes with dieting. I put on some weight in those three months of quitting smoking because when you don't smoke you get bored. So you find yourself snacking on a little bit of cheeseburger on the side or nibbling on some pizza here and there to pass the time. But all that changes the day I wake up with a jolt of inspiration and I decide that I'm gonna lose weight damn it. So I make an oath to myself to eat only healthy foods from now on. And shame on me if I succumb to snacking on 100 calorie snack packs or any of that other nonsense. So I drink kale shakes and count my calories every day and I start to lose weight and feel good about myself but then that day comes months later when I'm at some food court in some random mall and the stupidest shit something I'd never eat if I hadn't been starving myself day in and day out up to this point like a gross corn dog or something that's the thing I set my sights on for some fucking reason and suddenly that corn dog looks like the best corn dog I'll ever eat in my life so I can't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity and all my willpower comes crashing down I stop watching what I eat as much from this point on and because I haven't been focusing on the second step to losing weight and probably the most important one, putting in the effort to exercise regularly, the foods that are slipping through the cracks of my willpower aren't being counteracted with physical activity, so thousands of calories are being shoveled into my mouth and not being burnt off. I balloon back to the weight I was at months before when I took my oath and when Jenny asks me why I'm always at the two extremes, I'm either scarfing down thousands of calories or starving myself with barely anything, why not just have a healthy delicious meal and exercise regularly. And my reply to such a dear and loving partner is simply, because this is just the way I do things. It's always been hard for me to grasp that these goals I set for myself need to be gradual changes I have to work into my lifestyle. Because otherwise, it's just an atomic bomb of inspiration going off. Something that compels me to put all my energy into something, only to then do a complete 180 and arrive back to where I started at. This weird series where I talk about stuff from my life has also followed the same pattern. The day the idea for Andy tell stories was born, I was sitting at home feeling like complete shit because I had just put three and a half years of my life into trying to finish a video game. That game was called Plexus, and what happened with that project was the same story that it's always been. An explosion of inspiration, working our asses off day in and day out to get it done. Everyone that plays it really digs it. We have fucking Disaster Piece on board to make music for our game. The same Disaster Piece that made the music for Fez, which, think what you will about Phil Fish, but the general consensus seems to be that if you didn't like Fez, at least the music was awesome enough to merit a purchase. So that dude is gonna make the music for our game. And we're also in talks with the dude who makes all the sound effects for the Team Meat games to see if he's gonna come on board. It was all within our grasp, but in the end, the workload was way too much for our three-person operation to handle, and the project has been on hold ever since. If you're interested in some of the more behind-the-scenes stuff, here's a link to some blog posts about the origin of Andy Tell Stories and Plexus. So it was right after the miserable failure of Plexus, after 
waking up from my depressive days where I blamed myself for all the problems we ran into making the game. That the familiar inspiration to do something, that the fucking itch I've had ever since I can remember to create something, anything, crept up inside of me and I thought of making Andy tell stories. I kept telling myself over and over, I have to finish something. I have to set a goal for myself that I finally fucking execute on and see it through all the way until the end. I swore an oath to myself, an oath to make one episode every two weeks no matter what happens. I wrote down two weeks no excuses on a piece of paper and kept it on my desk and it was like quitting cigarettes cold turkey all over again. Every two weeks I'd be racing against the clock and somehow keeping the wheels from falling off of this Andy Tell Stories contraption I put together on that one crazy night almost a year ago to this day and I kept this up remarkably well considering the workload. Having to draw every single image even though the last time I drew stuff was in high school. Having to listen to my cringy voice for hours and hours because I have to make sure there aren't any weird audio pops or anything like that. I kept all this up for about nine months straight. I had sworn an oath and even though every two weeks I was working sleepless nights barely managing to finish an episode right before the deadline, I genuinely enjoyed every second of it. This Andy tells stories thing is my shit and I wouldn't do this if I didn't enjoy it. But as you've now seen from my past attempts, old habits die hard and a few months ago I had my first late episode. It came out a couple days past my sworn deadline and I felt awful. The first late episode was like a chink in my armor and that one crack started unfolding and unraveling and affecting everything else in my life. More and more deadlines started piling up and now my episodes were coming out a day or two late every time without fail. The two week deadline started interfering with my personal life. The two week deadline started interfering with my work schedule. The very thing that I swore an oath to uphold and used as a fuel to empower me and help me carry on two weeks no excuses was now the thing I dreaded the most because by that point I was putting everything else going on in my life aside to hit that deadline. I'd come out of a haze of working three days straight on an episode and I decide to take a bit of time out of my schedule to log into Twitter. I see an awesome message someone sends me that makes me feel amazing and makes it all worth it but when I click on the reply button and I'm about to type something out I see that the message was sent to me two weeks ago around the time I was working my hardest to get through my previous deadline. So now I'm met with the heartbreaking reality that even if I respond to such a touching gesture I'm gonna look like an asshole because it took me so late to reply. Plus the fact that I happen to be reading this Twitter message on a Saturday night. So I only have tonight and the rest of Sunday to edit all my audio and put in the finishing touches so my episode comes out on Monday and I hit my deadline. Two weeks, no excuses. The same goes for YouTube comments. I'd poke my head out of the dirt while working on a new episode and I'd read the comments from the previous episode and it always feels so fucking worth it. But again, the deadline is just around the corner. So instead of interacting with such an awesome group of people, it's back to working on the next episode. Two weeks, no excuses. So all of this is to say, this is the last episode of Andy Tell Stories. The last episode of Andy Tell Stories Season 1. There is gonna be a Season 2, but it's about time I start working smarter and not harder. I forgot to mention that eventually with the smoking, I did manage to find a balance. I bought an e-cigarette and I started off with the e-liquids that had the highest nicotine content, and then I weaned myself off and went down in the nicotine, until right now I'm at the lowest amount. No quitting cold turkey like I used to. Now it's all about pacing myself and achieving my goals gradually and in a not insane manner. With the dieting thing. Right now I'm exercising and eating healthy the way I should have been a year ago. No weird crash diets, no strict calorie counting followed by amazing looking corn dogs that put me in a food eating frenzy. I'm working smarter now, not harder. So to make a long story short, I don't know when season 2 will be out. It could be later this year, it could be sometime next year. But for now, I'm done making do or die pacts and promises with myself that are physically and mentally impossible to keep. After one year of working on Andy Tell Stories and having put out 25 episodes, all of which combined equals 5 hours of content for people to rewatch while they wait for season 2, or 5 hours for someone new to Andy Tell Stories to stumble onto and binge watch for the rest of the day. Almost 2,000 subscribers later, I can honestly say that I'm extremely proud of this motherfucker, and I'm not about to let it die just because the guy that created it has a record of not exactly sticking the landing after he gets a burst of inspiration. So this is not me saying goodbye, it's me saying I'll be back sometime later. Keep an eye out for me whenever I come back with season 2. You can also send me a line at atsmailbag at gmail.com with any comments, questions, or anything else. And even if I read your message and come to find out it's been two weeks since you first sent it, that's okay too. Because for the first time in a long time, there is no deadline. There is no oath I have to keep. And it feels fucking great to be able to say that.